Okay, so in this video, we are going to take a quick walkthrough through um, AWS Cloud9, which is an IDE for creating applications uh, that are completely based on a browser. So uh, very lightweight, um, and it supports many different languages, which will and tools and functionality that you would expect to see in a full featured full featured IDE um, just inside of a browser. Uh, so to get started, what you're going to do is you're going to navigate uh, once you log into the AWS console to the AWS Cloud9 dashboard, um, which I'm showing you here. Uh, so if you want to get to that, you just go to the services and type in Cloud9, or if you visited recently, you can look at your history, you select Cloud9, which will eventually take you to uh, the dashboard. When you first reach the dashboard, dashboard, there aren't going to be any environments, so we need to create one. So let's go ahead and create our first environment, and it doesn't matter what name you give it. Um, I'm just going to call it Randy's Test Environment. Uh, click Next Steps. Uh, these environment settings, we're just going to pick the default here. Um, behind this IDE is going to be a full um, EC2 instance that's going to be used to host um, what we're going to be developing in. Uh, so for right now, we're just going to leave the defaults. We're going to leave it as a T2 micro uh, instance type, uh, which is part of the free tier, so we won't be charged for any of the time when it's running, and it's sufficient for what we're trying to do. So the rest of the defaults are, are fine. We'll click Next Steps. We will then go ahead and create the environment. Uh, now, when, when um, AWS is creating the environment, it, it will take a few minutes to provision the EC2 instance and get it started. So you're going to kind of sit here for a little while, a couple minutes, um, and it'll let you know once it's done, this little uh, pop-up will go away and you'll be free to start using the IDE. Okay, so now once the environment has been provisioned, uh, we are sitting inside of the IDE. Uh, again, it's all based on a browser, so uh, let's kind of walk through the layout here a little bit. What you're going to have here is uh, the menu bar, and the menu bar is where you can get to common functionalities such as saving, creating files. Um, then you can do searches. You can change the views so we can turn on or turn off certain views to customize the interface the way you want it to look. Um, you can also, uh, we'll talk later about how we can debug our applications. We'll come back to that one. Um, you can get access to various tools such as the process list. Uh, again, since this is being hosted on, on a Linux platform, uh, you have access to see all of the running processes on that platform. And if you needed to, you can you know, kill them or, or kind of see how it was happening. So if you were having any kind of performance or issues, memory or CPU utilization issues, uh, this is where you can kind of debug that. For our purposes, it's really not important, but just understand that that's one of the tools that you can get access to um, when you were doing this uh, in a real uh, development environment. Uh, windows, we can turn on and turn off certain windows. We'll, we'll cover some of that as well. So again, this is the main toolbar. Um, you can hide it to free up some space. Uh, if you do hide it, there's a little drop down here to get back to it. Um, the main window here is where we're going to do most of our editing. Okay, and it comes up to a welcome page. Uh, on the left-hand side here is our environment list, which is where we can see all the files uh, that we have. When you start up a new instance, you typically are, are you typically have one file started, so they just kind of give you the starting kind of welcome. Um, readme file, if you will, to get you started. Okay, bottom half is where we'll have some of our command windows, which we'll cover uh, here shortly. Okay, so that's kind of the main thing. Uh, what it looks like. Uh, if you never needed, if you needed to get back to the dashboard, uh, you can come up to the toolbar here, the menu bar, and select the drop down and select go to your dashboard. What that'll do is that'll take you back into the AWS console where you can see your running environments. Uh, so here's our one running environment that we, we, we just provisioned. Uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and click on the details there and kind of see everything about it. Not much really of that much value here. Just understand that it's available. Um, if you want to get back to the IDE, you can either click this button, which will open it back up in a second browser window. Uh, but also, um, the way this works is, is it keeps the original window there. So because when you go to your dashboard, it opens up in a different browser window, or browser tab, if you will. You can just navigate back to the ID to get back to what you do. Uh, so some of the things you can do in, in here is you can create files. Uh, so this is your environment window uh, where you can create your files or see the files that are created. Uh, but most of the, the editing is going to happen on the right-hand side here. So this is our editor windows. Uh, it is tab-based, and you can create additional 
tabs. <clears throat> so I'll create a new tab there and paste in some some uh, Ruby text here. It's not important what language it is. Again, the, the IDE itself supports many different languages. Uh, so when you first create a new file uh, or, and you add in here, it's going to come up as entitled. So we actually have to save it. It hasn't been saved yet. So if we want to save it back to our environment, we'll just come back here to the file menu and click save. And we'll just call it hello dot ruby rb save it out and there you'll see it in your list of files the other interesting thing is now we have syntax highlighting um, related to the ruby language and that's because uh, the, the cloud nine will automatically recognize the what you save a file as as a certain ex extension and it'll then map that to the correct language which you can see here on the right hand side at the bottom so, so it knows this is the ruby language so we get syntax highlighting and support for the ruby languages if you actually clicked on this, you can kind of get a sense of all the other languages that Cloud9 supports. So again, Ruby is just one of them. Uh, but if you had a JavaScript file with a JS extension, it would, it would give you the JS support. If you had an HTML file, uh, you'd have the you have HTML support as well. So again, whatever whatever file type you happen to be using, you can um, mat, it'll match up to the appropriate language um, automatically. Okay. You also have the option to switch it if, if you, for some reason it doesn't happen automatically, you can you can always switch it yourself. Okay, so that's basically kind of how the editor works. Uh, the editor again is is, is tab based, uh, so you create different tabs here and continue to have them across there. You can also just to the right of the tab list, if you hit that little drop down there, um, you can switch and split the windows as well so you could have your editor windows split in and have multiple files open at the same time and you can actually even split it again um, to rows if you wanted to um, or if you come to one of these predefined ones like for example this one uh, you can kind of have your editor window really kind of carved up the way you need to look um, it all depends on what type of what type of real estate you have in terms of how big your workstation is and what's available to you i personally prefer the single pane, so that's the kind of one we'll start with. Um, okay, so if we go over here to the right-hand side, you'll see these additional things here. For example, um, outline. Uh, so if you open up a file that has um, supported, if you have a file that has some sort of structure to it, you, if you click on outline, it'll show you that structure. So if this were an HTML file, you'd be able to see, uh, see that structure as well. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and create a new editor window here and paste in some HTML and uh, go ahead and save it as uh, hello HTML. All right, so now it knows the HTML. Uh, so if I come up here, you can kind of see now I've got the structures. That's what the outline view gives you is the ability to kind of drill down into kind of see um, kind of a collapsed view of, of whatever language, whatever application you're creating. And it's going to be dependent upon what language. Um, you'll notice here there's a little there's a little bug that I found within uh, Cloud9. Sometimes it won't display the text. Um, I think that has to do with switching between the different views. But if I just close it out and reopen it, uh, then it'll correct itself. So I think so. Let's see that now. Other things you can do is you can come up here to um, search. So if you go to the little search here and you can search for files so if you put the slash and like for example our read it'll actually um, filter out files so you can kind of see that okay so that's if you have a large environment or lots of files in it that's an easy thing to do other thing too is if you want to you can go to a file number so if i hit the colon and then type in for example 13 or 12 i guess i got 12 um, and you have the open editor window, it'll automatically jump to that line number. So this is what is referred to as the gutter here, which gives you your, your line numbers. So you can do that. Um, if you want to see specific symbols, so if I bring in, I go back to Ruby here, and then I type the at sign, and type in say goodbye, it will navigate to the symbols. So if, so if you have variables or functions, uh, you can first search and go right to specific functions. Very powerful search feature that's available. 
On the bottom half here is also kind of an important area. This is where you can get to uh, a terminal window. So again, you have access to the underlying terminal window where your environment is running. So it's because it's one space, you can run one space like you know, Prince Working Directory or LSSL and kind of see the files that are there. there. Um, you can also access AWS functionality such as if I want to see all the if I want to see all my S3 buckets, I can say AWS S3 LS, and that'll show me all of the um, uh, S3 buckets that I have access to, right? So you have access to not only the underlying terminal window and the bat, you can run bash scripts and such. Uh, you also have access to full feature AWS API, um, which we'll cover in a later module. Uh, the immediate window is similar, although the immediate window is really used for doing kind of some quick and dirty uh, JavaScript commands. Uh, so it's kind of a way to run a command quickly within JavaScript uh, to produce some sort of output or to you know, do something small. Uh, for example, what I can do is I can have a for loop. Let me just create a simple for loop. <clears throat> So I'll start my for loop and I'll hit uh, shift enter. That will complete the rest of the closing bracket for my for loop here. Make sure I get all my syntax right there. Get rid of that. That should be a 10. All right, so I can say console. Well, I mean, you can kind of see you, you got the syntax highlighting and, and support for JavaScript since it knows it's um, supporting JavaScript. So now I'll just print out. Uh, so this is going to run, just if I hit control enter, it'll actually run that JavaScript command. So very easy, quick and dirty ways to uh, access either a terminal window, immediate window, and there's other things you can also open up files down here as well. Um, as well. So you have access to, uh, you know, <clears throat> without having to leave the IDE, you have access to what you need to write applications on various languages as well as support to open up terminal windows and, uh, and such. Um, other thing lastly we'll talk about real quick is the debugger. Uh, so since it's an IDE, it ha most IDEs have a debugger, and, and this also does, obviously. Uh, so it supports all what you would expect to see with the debugger, meaning I can look at variables, I can put breakpoints in my code, I can watch expressions, I can watch, um, I can see the call stack and such. So as an example, if I come up here to uh, a new browser window, and I'm just going to paste in some simple JavaScript here. Uh, into this new window. So click new file, paste it in there. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm going to save it as hello.js. All right, so there you go. The language is now JavaScript. So here's a simple program. Um, so what I can do with this debugger, on this, I can actually put a breakpoint. So the easiest way to put a breakpoint is to come in here to the gutter row here. And let's say I want to put a breakpoint right on line six, meaning I just want the program uh, to stop at that point, stop execution there so I can see what's going on. So I'll put a breakpoint there, and now if I come up to run, and select run with, and come down to Node.js, again, this is a JavaScript file, so I'm gonna run it using Node. So I run that, and it will it will launch and connect into the debugger, and you'll kind of see immediately that now I've got, slightly different view here, I've got my breakpoint, it's, it's depicted by that little arrow and kind of a stopping uh, color change right there. Uh, on the right hand side, I've got access to all my local variables. Um, if I had a call stack, I'd be able to see the call stack on what was happening. It's a simple one there, but you know, again, it's not, not a very big program, so the call stack's not very interesting. Uh, I could also, if I had expressions, I could put some expressions in there. But the program is kind of sitting here at this point, so I can look at the variables. I can see, well, at this point on line six, on the variable i has a value of 10, which is, which is, is true because I set i to 10 here on line three and I can, can kind of look at what's going on. Um, using these controls up here, I can navigate, I can continue or resume the program, which will resume it to the next breakpoint. Um, if I prefer, I can step one row, one line at a time through a program. Okay, so, and once I'm ready, I can just resume it and the program will just continue to the, to the end or to the next breakpoint, whatever comes first. Okay, so that's, <clears throat> that's the debugger, uh, very powerful. Again, this is a quick little walkthrough. Please uh, take some time, look through the program, uh, get familiar with it. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is if you're done with an environment and you don't need it anymore, 
uh, it's a good idea to come up here, uh, go back to your dashboard, and uh, delete it. Uh, so, but it's totally up to you if you want if you want to do that. Uh, so you just type in delete. Um, otherwise, everything sticks around. All of your uh, all of your files are there for the duration. Um, but it's a good idea to delete the environment once you're done with it. So I went ahead and deleted my environment. And again, it's got a it's got a deprovision an EC2 instance. Um, actually, if you go over here and go to EC2, you might be able to catch it. Um, there's my instance, and there's the one that I'm, it's actually terminating. It has some other ones here that I had terminated, but there's my uh, there's my instance terminating, and um, that's it. Great, right, thank you.